Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Douglas Conservation Commission meeting for Monday, July 18th, 2022. Time is now 7 11 p.m. Uh, before we get into our agenda, I'd like to have a moment of silence for the passing of Selectman Cortes. Thank you very much. Um, we have some orders to be signed. Meeting minutes, did anyone review those? Okay. March can 21, we, no. Okay. Can we review those for next meeting? Um, number three, request for certificate of compliance. Uh, 121 Wester Street, we haven't received any new information. Um, number four, 36 Maple Street, Kevin Hart. Is anyone in the audience here to present? Um, Steve? Yeah. Um, do you have any pictures? Yeah, they have the, I, I want you to have a copy of the as bill. Um, let me see if I can bring up the, uh, the video on the screen. Oh, can, uh, can Cable make, uh, give me sharing capabilities? Is uh, who's in the cable room? Is uh, trying to figure it out, sir. One second. I can. Do I want to do it from here? See that? Yes. Yep. yep. So this is the uh, this is the site 36 Maple. Everything's pretty well established. Looks like everything was done according to the plan. I didn't really see anything outside the uh, what was approved. The site looked like it was in pretty really good shape. Any questions? And then we receive the as belt, correct? You do have the as belt, yeah. It should be a copy of anyone's folder, too. Okay. Um, no, I can, I'll zoom it up a little bit. There's the well down there. Trunk line is in the woods there a little bit. This is coming around to the driveway. Pretty clean site. They did a nice job controlling it. Okay. Board. Questions, questions? Looks good to me. Looks good. Okay. I will entertain a motion to issue the certificate of compliance for 36 Maple Street. So moved. We're going to do a roll call. All, okay. Motion made by Mike, seconded by Eric. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Tracy Sharkey, aye. Okay. Next would be um, five. We've already done that one. Uh, six, 161 Maple Street. Denise Davis minor field change. So this was the three dead trees. Um, they were marked in the field. Is anyone here presenting? Thank you. Yep. Name and address. Hey, Good. Name and address, this please. Denise Mike with Goddard Consulting. I'm here for Denise Davis, the homeowner. And there were three trees that she'd like removed. Right now they're they're dead trees. So Steve went out there and took this video. They're marked in red. Um, pretty close to the driveway there, so her concern is that they might fall and onto the driveway where her cars are, and uh, there's going to eventually be a barn. So those two in the video there might end up falling onto the barn at some point. Um, so she was wondering if the commission would be willing to um, 
allow her to cut those. She said she'd be willing to cut them anyway. The con con would allow her to do so. Okay, so all three of the trees are marked and dead. Would the board have any issues with her cutting them down in their entirety? No stumping. No stumping. And no stumping. No stumping. But she can cut them all the way down. Okay, right. cut them down to the stump. Yeah, just stump. no stumping. Yep. Um, All right, yeah. I'd the like. Agrees. That's great. Yeah, I'm going to do a formal vote on considering the three dead tree removal, no stumping, um, as a motion for a minor field change. Do I have so moved? So, so moved. Mo motion made by Eric. Second. Second by Mike. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Tracy Sharkey, aye. Thank you. All right, great, thanks, have a good one. You too. Okay, number 775 Oak, Old Farm Road. Zachary oh, Reed. Yeah, that's, that, that, that should be omitted. Um, I, I addressed that, uh, it was a question that was put on there and uh, I addressed it outside the meeting. It was just a procedural thing. That was a, that was a site that had an old order of conditions and they have to refile. It was, okay. it was expired probably about eight years ago. Okay. And number 873 Manchog Road, Tim Hare Demo. Is someone here on behalf of that project? Seeing none, so we have in our packet the 73 Manchog Road. They're requesting to demolish. They had an old order of conditions uh, that expired. They are within the 100. Uh, we can have some discussion. I believe that they need to file an RDA because we can control the erosion controls and those down well, they're outside the riverfront area though. So is anyone here for this item? It should be, but um, it's not. Okay. So they do need to file. Okay. For the so removal. A question. Yeah, so, so that file. that would be the building. Okay, and then we have potential member application, possible votes. In your packet, you have a correspondence that Mr. Fitzpatrick would like to join us on the Conservation Commission. So um, if we could mute anyone that's online, please keep your microphone muted until you're addressed. I'm hearing someone speaking. Thank you. Um, so, could you? Steve, it's you. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. So, we need to decide what we'd like to recommend this applicant to um, the, the selectman for um, appointment. Yes. Okay. Which one? Could I hear a motion to that? Uh, to make a motion to appoint Joseph Fitzpatrick to the Board of Selectmen. Recommend, yes. Recommend. Yes. Um, for a full member. Motion made by Ark. Second. Second by this Mike. For Joe Fitzpatrick. Yes. Second. Second. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Tracy Sharkey, aye. Steve, if you could send a memo. Yeah. Thank you. So um, I guess uh, 70, the gentleman for 75 Old Farm does have a quick question. If you have this, maybe a couple of minutes, um, just a procedural question on the property. Okay. He's in front of you, so that I should be walking into your room. Right yeah, now. he's here. So, um, the question that I have, name and address, oh, please, for the record. Oh, yep. Zachary Reed. Yep. Um, F seventy five Old Farm Road. Uh huh. Um, so there was a plan that was already approved, mm -hmm. but it's obviously outdated. Mm -hmm. We just want to make sure that if we resubmit the same plan, is conservation going to be okay with? maybe some of the lines are a little bit closer than what maybe today's standards are, um, or does it have to be all redesigned? What's the date on the plan? Uh, 2005. Okay. Um, 
I would say that if it was previously approved, yeah. then you shouldn't have any issues. Okay. I don't. You're not moving anything. No, 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 we're not planning on moving anything. It's already designed, done, and stuff like that. Um, I, we just want to make sure that it's. I can't speak for the for everyone on the board, so no. it's probably different members then. And I think our bylaws have been the same since 2005. Okay. So the, I, the flags would have to be rehung. Um, yeah, everything would need yeah. to be refreshed, staked out in the field for review. Yep. And then, um, did, did, is this your engineer? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> Name and address. Ralph, Ralph my yep. was our former engineer. Mm -hmm. The main issue is that the old plan shows work like at the edge of the wetland. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the commission would be okay with that. Oh, have a, That's I would say, if there is no <laughs> alternative, is there an alternative? Uh, we don't know. I mean, we haven't surveyed the project yet. So it was. And we didn't even reflag it yet, so. But there is some air work areas that okay. are right so at the edge of the wetland. So would the commission be okay if he? I can't say. I would say you know the commission. I know. So That's why I told them to come here. Okay. That was a good money. move. Yes, yeah. that was a good move. I cannot see where it's, uh, the house is. It's very tiny. Asphalt drive and then proposed patio. Yes. Okay. The work basically on on the site on the Oh area. oh okay. I I don't remember this because it was so but I see there's a building setback line. Yes. So you're right up on it. Yeah. And also right up on the wetland line. Mm-hmm. Right on the Mm-hmm. You're going with the same exact sized house? We might try to make it smaller, but we don't even know if the wetland is the larger or smaller. So we have to. Yeah, it could have possibly yeah. changed. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. But his question is like, if, if there's any option, if we had to get too close to the wetland, would we set okay with the commission? I, I can't this site say. Is very limited with the setback with the wetland. But we have previously encouraged people to go to ZBA. To move to move that front set back. For so, new construction, I mean, yeah, that was for new construction. There was one on um, depot the, that the was granted. The, sep the septic is between the house and the property line. And there's a setback with like the fire that he cannot violate the setback. You can get a waiver. No, we cannot have with new construction septic. For the property like line. For property yeah, line? Yeah, septic, septic mm -hmm. to house has to be minimum 20. Yeah, yeah. And to the property line, 10, yeah. 10 feet, and you cannot get Ten. a waiver for new construction. Yeah, There's okay. There's no option for that. I would say you've got to squeeze it. I don't even know. This is, it's a tough site. Yes. Very tough site. So. I mean, he might consider a smaller house, but in some areas he might have to get close to the Yeah, without the filing. Mm. I'm not sure. I think that your engineer is going to have to do some magic. I, so, because it was previously approved, it's. I believe it can be granted. It's just. Um, what are the safeties in place that you're going to propose to eliminate the fill? Or you fill a little and replicate. I don't know if that's an option to revise that line. But, I mean, the patio, I don't think you need a patio, right? No, yes, maybe. <laughs> it's hard to say. Yes. I can't, I mean, you'd have to do your best on this. I don't know what the background is. Steve was here when this was approved, so. Yeah, I think the trade-off, I'm spending on one, was that 15 years ago, so. Yeah, 17. I, I think it's a large lot, there's a lot of, there's a lot of wetland or upland on the other side, so they're not, they didn't do a crossing, so I think the commission, they approved what they did because they kept everything to the street side of the wetlands, I'm just speculating. Okay. But, 
again, you know, it's a new board, it's uh, 15 years later, so the answer to the gentleman's question, uh, that's, you know, it is what it is when you, when you open up the public hearing and the board and the commissioners have the ability to give comments and whatnot, you know, that's, you know, you don't have an approval right now, so it's to say that your question was to come in and if you just use the exact same plan, you probably have a better opportunity, but when you start changing things, or even then, the commission, you know, they have to vote on it, so it's not a clear cut case. I would look at all the alternatives and then make it the best. So we like the anti creep, either the boulders, like, I, I can't see what's proposed here. Uh, limit of clearing. Uh, yeah, it's a tough site. It's a tough site, yeah. But you're able to fill 5,000 square feet, so um, you, I think you need some mitigation measures proposed. And you really can't move with all the limitations with the setbacks. So I would say file it up. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Next, new business, 7 p.m., public hearing, notice of intent, 56 Bigelow Road, new single family dwelling. So this was, let's see here. Okay, yes. It was a previously approved, right? No, it's a new filing. You should have a uh, oh, okay. public hearing notice in your folder. Okay. And I, I it was a different you, Bigelow. So. Okay, thank you. Town and Douglas Conservation Commission, 29 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass., 01516. Legal notice for public hearing pursuant to Mass. General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40. Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, the Town and Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on July 18, 2022 at 7 p.m. for a notice of intent filed by Brian Spekleski. Spekleski, located at 56 Bigelow Road, Douglas, Mass., for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and the Wetland Protection Act, Mass. General Law, 131, Section 40. A proposed work involves reconstruction of a single-family home, associated septic system, and site grading. Public participation will be available by attending the meeting at the Town of Douglas Municipal Center, located at 29 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass., or pursuant to Governor Baker's June 16, 2021, order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law. General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, the public may participate in this meeting via remote participation. A website for the meeting will be provided on the conservation agenda posted on the town's website at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Copies of the plan may be examined electronically by contacting Conservation Commission 508-476-4000, extension 205, July 6th. Okay, name and address. Good evening, my name is Dr. Mercedes, who's out for the engineer. I'm representing the client, Brian, uh, for the project. Uh, there is an existing house, which is about 38 feet away from the pond. There is an existing cesspool that could be in our table that's inside the 50-foot buffer and a well. Uh, we're proposing uh, right now to build the septic completely outside the buffer zone and uh, drill a new well closer to the water to eliminate having a septic and having about four to five feet of fill next to the pond. Um, the new house will be about 41 and a half feet, a little bit farther from the pond, and we're also doing some roof runoff uh, on both sides of the house to reduce some of the runoff. Okay, sorry, I'm just waiting for. Oh, yep, yeah, nope. Okay, so we're moving farther away than the existing? Yes, and the septic would be completely outside the 100 foot buffer. Okay. And no ZBA approval needed? No, ZBA approved the project. Okay. And con um, Board of Health? Board of Health is okay. Okay. And no trees to be cut? Nothing. Okay. Can we do, for the erosion controls, we're doing? Uh, same straw bottles and uh, substance. Okay. All around. 
All right, and then can we do an extra straw rod all around the well pit, the slurry pit? Sure, I mean, it's right here. Yeah, I see it, I just, sure, I'm a little that. concerned, yeah. Sure, yeah. Just no another row no around that. Um, and do you have a stockpile area? Uh, that's all the stockpiles will be outside the site, outside the stockpile. Okay. Steve, do you have anything? No, I mean, it's pretty pretty good site. Here's a video of the site if you want to. I think the house to the left came in for their septic early in the spring. It's 56 Bigelow. So if the okay, so is, is it waterfront? Yes. Okay. But they moved it further away? Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So we'll make a note for the minutes. Um, Katie Grace Dudley has joined us, Commissioner the Vice Chair, uh, 732. Okay. Anyone in the audience have any questions or concerns regarding this hearing agenda item? See none. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Seeing none. Boyd? Any questions? Questions? Concerns? Questions. Okay. So we're going to do an extra row of straw waddles, all stockpiling outside of the 100. We have um, no machinery parked within the 100. Yes, There's notes. It's all in notes. Okay. Well, you know what I'm working with, right? Yeah. <laughs> Teeny tiny. Okay. Board, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Motion made by Mike. Second. Second by Eric. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Rucka, aye. Katie Grace? Katie Dudley, aye. Okay. And I'll entertain a motion to issue the order of conditions with the special conditions as previously mentioned. So moved. Motion made by Mike. Second. Second by Eric. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Rucka, aye. Thank you, Dudley. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Next item. Town of Douglas Conservation Commission, 29 Depot Street, Douglas. Legal notice for public hearing pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40. Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, the Town of Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on July 18, 2022 at 7 p.m. for a notice of intent filed by Jason Walsh located at 1 Pilgrim Court, Douglas for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40. The proposed work involves reconstruction of an above ground pool. Public participation will be available by attending the meeting at the Douglas Municipal Center at 29 Depot Street or pursuant to Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law. General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, the public may participate in this meeting via remote participation. A website for the meeting will be provided on the conservation agenda posted on the town's website at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Copies of the plan may be examined electronically by contacting the Conservation Commission, 508-476-4000, July 2nd. Okay, name and address, please. Hey, again, of my guys, the Dutch Homemaker Engineering. I'm representing uh, Jason Walsh, the owner of the property. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, 
A tree came down on the house, the back and the pool, and we got an emergency repair for the back of the house. And for the pool itself, it's just an above ground pool that's just going to be reassembled. No, no, no digging, no construction, mm -hmm. just assembled the pool as mm -hmm. above ground. The same area is there already. Mm -hmm. And basically, that's all the work. And all the work area will be surrounded by erosion control. Mm -hmm. Just um, staked straw models, right? Uh, Throw um, and sand okay. Okay. Just to be safe. All right. There are there additional sand coming in? No. Okay. The sand is there. Okay. All right. Anyone in the audience have any questions or concerns regarding this filing? So. Board. So. Katie Grace, this is a pool replacement. So a tree fell. Okay, so it's, it's on the same footprint. What's the distance to the wetland? Mm. Fifteen. About fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen to twenty feet. Fifteen to twenty feet from the edge of the wetland or the wetland buffer? The, edge of the, the edge of the wetland. So it's an existing um it was an existing pool. Footprint. Yep, and then yeah. there's no sand and no work. It's just going to be assembled above ground pool to repair, yeah. replace the old one that was damaged. No, understood. Is there is there like a clear delineation between the edge of the wetland and like the edge of the pool? Like, is there an edge of property line? It's just thing in that area. I'm just wondering, would the construction of a new pool sometimes things are different? There is an established delineation because they aren't bringing in any sand. So they're just simply going to reconstruct the pool within the sand area. So as far as the delineation, no, but there's going to be no machinery. It's an 18 foot diameter above ground pool within existing sand area. Actually the old pool. Okay, thank you. The old pool was crossing the property line, so we'll bring it in closer. Okay, so the old pool was actually closer than the proposed pool. So how'd the sand get there? Well, it was it smaller? The, no, the old pool was like around here. It was actually crossing oh, the I property see. line, so okay. we have to bring it back closer to the house. Okay, but two feet sand, off. It's still on top of the sand. Okay. And DP didn't say anything on this one, right? Okay. All right. Word? I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Motion made by Eric. Second. Second by Mike. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Thank you, Dudley, aye. Thank you. I entertain a motion to issue the order of conditions for one pilgrim court. So moved. Motion made by Eric. Second. Second, I'm sorry. Seconded by Mike. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Thank you very much. Okay, RDA public meeting request for determination of applicability Oak Street pole installation. Town of Douglas Conservation Commission, 29 Depot Street, Douglas Mass, 01516, legal notice for public meeting request for determination of applicability, the Town of Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting for the Massachusetts Electric Company on July 18th at 7 p.m. in the Municipal Center, 29 Depot Street, for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40. The proposed request for determination of applicability work location is along Oak Street within the public way, and the applicant is requesting permission to install two utility poles and re relocate one utility pole along Oak Street. Public participation will be available by attending the meeting at the Town of Douglas Municipal Center located at 29 Depot Street or pursuant to Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 
order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18. The public may participate in this meeting via remote participation. A website for the meeting will be provided on the conservation agenda posted on the town's website. At least 48 hours prior to the meeting, copies of the RDA may be examined electronically by contacting Conservation Commission 508-476-4000, section 205, July 11th. Okay, anyone here presenting? Name and address, please. Yes, hello. Can you all hear me all right? Yes. My name is Carolyn Gorse. I'm a wetland scientist with BSD Group. Um, address is at, um, currently my home address, uh, I'm presenting from home, but the work address is at 1 Mercantile Street in Worcester for BSD Group. Thank you. So I am here to present an RDA for, as I said, the installation of two new utility poles, the relocation of one utility pole along Oak Street. These poles are numbered 1050, 8, and 550. Would you like me to share my screen um, to show a picture of the environmental resources map that we submitted? Sure. Oh. I'm going to need you to enable screen sharing, if that's all right. It should be all set. Okay. So here you can see the three poles and the resource areas and information about tree removals um, nearby each pole. This work is part of a larger maintenance project to interconnect blue wave solars, uh, solar production facility into the larger distribution system. These pole installations are located within the 100 foot buffer zone to Inland Bank and DBW, the locally regulated 50 foot no disturbed zone to wetlands and 100 foot no, dis no disturbed zone to streams. All of these pole installations are limited to the previously disturbed roadside areas within the public right of way. BSC conducted a site visit to confirm these wetland resource boundaries on April 22nd, 2022. And these new installations are subject to review under the Wetlands Protection Act as well as the local bylaw since they involve tree removals. Uh, they cannot be considered exempt minor buffer zone activities or utility maintenance. And in total, there's a total of seven tree removals required for the installation of pole 550 over on the right side. A total of 10 tree removals required for the middle pole, pole number eight, and three tree removals required for the installation of pole 10-50. And these specific trees were identified by uh, forestry crews and will be necessary to maintain sufficient safe clearance for the overhead electrical lines. And uh, several of these trees are leaning across the road or towards the pole location, so they do uh, pose a potential safety hazard in the near future as well. Ground disturbance will be limited to the footprints of the pole installations, approximately two square feet per pole. And each pole takes about a few hours to a day to complete the installation process. The tree removals will be uh, cut at the base with stumps retained. Larger pieces will remain and brush and debris will be chipped and removed from the site. Some other best management practices will include erosion and sedimentation controls, as you can see on the maps, uh, installed prior to the start of any work. Any stockpiled materials will be stored outside of resource areas and buffer zones and surrounded by sediment controls. All of this work will be accessed from the paved roadway surfaces and any disturbed areas will be restored to pre-existing conditions as needed. At this time, I'd be happy to take any questions from the commission or the community. We are respectfully requesting a negative determination for this work. Thank you very much. Board, any questions? So how many trees in total to be taken? So I believe the total was 15. It was three plus 10 plus, plus seven. So that's a total of 20 tree removal, sorry. And this is on a scenic road, so it'll be a scenic. You're doing a scenic road permit also at the planning board? I am unaware of okay. the permit because it's outside of the environmental okay. permitting, but I can double check. Okay. Mike? Katie Grace? Hope yeah, just two questions on this on. Uh, first, just because I can't see the distance thing. Yeah. Um, do the trees being moved actually provide any shade to the wetland question? Or are they, what, how far are they? 
Most wetlands are fur further than 10 feet from any wetland resource areas, but they're all further than 10 feet from resource areas. Um, oh, the tree removal themselves. So the poles are further than 10 feet. Um, I'm not, we were not given the exact coordinates of all these pole, of all these tree removals, so there might be some. No, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. No, I'm just, yeah, I'm trying to, trying to determine if we're losing any shading area in the wetlands. And then the, um, I forgot what the other question was. <laughs> um, uh, and then I guess for Tracy, the, just making sure that we're not parking equipment overnight. Um, if there's any equipment to be used for the full installation. Right. All of oh, the wood. Okay, cool. So the wood chips are being removed. Um, is there a reason that they have to come out of that area? Is it there's just not a good space in that vicinity to put them? Um, usually we remove the chips because if we leave the chips on site, they can prevent vegetation growth in that area. If there's a spot that you'd like us okay. to leave the chips, we can, but that's just kind of a typical. Most people want them removed. No, that's fair. I'm just trying to retain the nutrients, but if it doesn't make sense for that location on Oak Street, if it just doesn't make sense to put them back in the woods um, because there's another house or there's another item there, then that's fine. Thank you. Any follow-up questions? Mike? No? Okay. You ready to vote? I'll entertain a motion. No greater than 20 trees, no parking of equipment within the buffer. And removing the, the tree chips. Still motion made by Eric. Second. Second by Mike for a negative determination of applicability for Oak Street pole installation. Katie Grace, um, all those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Katie Dudley, aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. See, did you get those conditions? Thank you. Steve? Yeah. Did you get those conditions? Yeah, no parking equipment within the buffer zone. We moved the chips on, on the site. It, it no more than 20 trees to be no removed. Okay. Um, Katie Grace, I'm going to just open this next one up under old business for you. And if you can call the vote, that would be great. Close the hearing and call the vote. Okay, this is 84 Webster Street. Yep. Okay. So under old business, 7 p.m. public hearing, continue notice of intent, 84 Webster Street, new single family dwelling, William Nelson, possible votes. So last meeting, we didn't have a quorum for the vote. Um, the plan was all taken care of with the changes. So uh, if you'd like to ask the audience any questions or concerns and then uh, close the hearing. Okay, so this is continued. You already opened up at the last meeting. Yeah, it's yeah, it was open for okay. a couple hearings. Okay, no, sorry, and it's a public hearing. All right, excellent. No, absolutely. Um, this is KGW asking uh, general public if there's any comments on 84 Webster Street from the public. Seeing none. Thank you, Tracy. I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. It's the move. Made by Eric. Second. Second by Mike. Okay, all those in favor, aye. Eric Harris, aye. Mike Brunko, aye. Katie Dudley, aye. All right, uh, public hearing closed, and we had no further comments from the board. I'm just Asking Mike and Eric, did you guys have any comments to they get resolved? Um, no comments for me. No. No comments. Okay, excellent. Um, did we set the standard conditions on this one as well? Yes. Okay. All right, I'll entertain a motion to issue. 
So moved. Motion made by Mike. Second. Seconded by Eric. Excellent. Roll call vote. Eric Harris, aye. Mike Frickle, aye. Thank you, definitely aye. Okay. Thank you very much. You're all set. Hmm. <laughs> Bye. Okay, next item, 7 p.m. Public hearing continue notice of intent Shore Road Lot 299, parcel 7.16. Cliff Ann Reed possible votes. Is someone here presenting on behalf of this? Margaret Bacon. I mean, uh, yeah, Margaret sent an email late this afternoon requesting a, uh, requested a uh, continuance. Um, they're still waiting for, I guess, uh, they're still waiting for the final. Uh, Final reports from the Holland Lake Solar Farm. Okay. I also, I also talked to her and, and had some correspondence with uh, if because uh, her client also we sent in uh, wetlands uh, letter about the emergency certificate that was issued to her Douglas Properties LLC last year, and we didn't have a response. Um, for some reason. Um, I, they asked him for that. They weren't aware of it. I don't know why we certified mailed it, but it seems like they didn't get a, get a copy of it. So they're going to probably, by the time of the next meeting, or just first hopefully address this, the letter also about the emergency certificate that was issued last July 2021. Okay. So board, we will continue. There's been a continuance requested. Continue to August 1st, 2022 at 7 p.m. Still moved. Motion made by Eric. Second. Second by Mike. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Greco, aye. KG Dudley, aye. Thank you. Continue to what time? Um, August 1st, 2022 at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Public hearing continued notice of intent 80 West Street septic repair. Brian Camuso. I think last meeting we were just waiting for a DP number. Yeah. Any comments from DP? Yes, we get a DP number. No. And comments. no comments. No. Okay. Uh, anyone in the audience have any questions or concerns regarding this filing? Seeing none, um, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Still moved. Motion made by Eric. Second. Second by Mike. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Thank you, Dudley. Aye. Okay, I will entertain a motion to issue the order of conditions for 80 West Street. So moved. Motion made by Mike. Second. Second by Eric. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Thank you, Dudley. Aye. Okay, thank you. All set. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You time. Thanks. 7 p.m. Public hearing continued. Amend amendment notice, it's supposed to be amended notice of intent. 115 Shore Road, Robert Diane Miller. I think um, Mark is not here. He was the one requesting some clarification on the plan. Uh, Katie Grace, can you see the plan on your computer? Do you have it pulled up at all? Yeah, I'm actually, I just got on my laptop and I'm just looking for the, oh, this is Shore Road, the PDF? Yes. Yeah, I'm opening it now. Okay. So could you tell us the edits that you've made to the plan since sure. the last meeting? Basically, we added all the spot grades to show where is the grade, where is the pool going to be, where the elevations are. And also, uh, we eliminated one of the two walls, the terrace wall. Do we get that plan? Yes. Also? Yeah. Um, I have this one. I cannot see anything on. Okay. I did send it to Steve. This one is just for a discussion purpose to show you. The other oh, one. okay. But the other one, this is the one that it has this section on it, you know, which is the overlay plan right there. But that one was approved before with all this grading going towards the neighbor, this whole area, the green area. So this was what was going like 
to me, but and that's what was approved before, the 2017. Yes, the 27th of June. Um, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Who's that? Thank you. Okay. So what was approved in, back in 2017 shows that this runoff going to the neighbor and actually matches what was existing before. What we're proposing is basically to eliminate that runoff to the neighbor. We add a retaining wall and force the runoff to go toward the, pump, the, the lake itself. So that's an improvement to the site. And also we're eliminating some of the grading right here by adding the retaining wall. And this would mean that not too much we reduce the grading going to the lake. And we're also adding a 2 by 5 by 2 feet deep uh, washed stones to intercept the runoff that's coming from the high area here. So basically, whatever comes from this high area, which is very small, will go in the ground here under the wall. So basically, we're eliminating the runoff to the neighbor, I mean, what was approved before, and also whatever coming from the high area right here is going into uh, an infiltration area under the Okay. So we believe this is an improvement to what was approved. What was the approved plan date? Uh, it was back in 2016. Was that the other one? Yeah. It's um, on the back side? No, the back side, this is the final one. Okay. But Steve has the approved one. Okay. Steve, yeah. comments on this? Well, the comment, well, Mark's not here, but I noticed that the approved, you made changes to what was approved years ago, because the, the approved plan showed a 12-inch pipe on the left side or on the right side of the property. Yeah, so that, you, that was the typo, and that's we see mm, that. We, because but that wasn't what was approved, though. Yeah. I mean, what's in the file is it doesn't say anything about it. Ain't, I'm just for the record. I, am I correct, for me, That well, I mean, what was shown on the plan was the pipe because we located the pipe both ends, and when we located the the end by the lake, we measured the pipe, so it measured 12 inch. So our assumption at this time that it's all 12 inch. Mm -hmm. But back when we came back, we found that it's an 8 inch connecting to a 12 inch somewhere, mm -hmm. don't know where. Mm -hmm. So it's one 8 inch at the end, it's connected with a pipe and a 12 inch RCP on the other side. So there is a connection somewhere, but my client didn't touch this pipe at all. It's, it's as is. It's okay, so the approved plan, you have it as a note on here, is not the approved plan that was previously approved. That's what you're telling me. The, the approved plan, that, uh, yeah. That's what Steve's saying. I so see. if I have the approved plan from 2015, yeah. or Steve, yeah, Steve, if you can bring it on the screen, if you can. So we need this to reflect whatever we're approving needs to reflect what the what actually happened, sure. even if it maybe was a typo or incorrect or yes. whatever you want to call it. Yes. Yeah, Steve has it actually has the whole. Uh, file. Yeah, let me see if I can bring it up. Hang on. Sure. See, was it 2012? Here, this video. Hold on a second. So, is this the plan right here? The, is that our plan or the older one? That's the previous engineer. Looks like a different font. Yeah, that's a different engineering company. That's no, ours was 2017. You emailed it to me. <laughs> What's that? You emailed it to me. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, so basically, I mean, we're not even touching the spike. We didn't even touch it during the whole process. It's the paper trail. Sure. To yeah. you understand. Yes, I know. Here we go. Hang on. All right, no problem. There it is. Is this it? Here you go. Yeah, these are the So I'm just so so you're representing kind of it. That plan he submitted, yes. you're showing this plan that was approved, yes. but this plan shows an existing 12 inch RCP. Yes. And then on the one that you're saying that was approved, you're, you're, you're editing it by throwing in yeah, an that, 8 inch yes. here, which yes. was, which was, it might be that now, but it wasn't. It wasn't what was represented at the time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That we said that uh, at that time we measured the pipe on one end. And that's so, okay. Yeah. Right, it's. 
it needs to be correctly depicted. Whatever was on the approved plan, if you're going to write approved. This is only for discussion. Okay. Okay. This is the proposed plan. Right. Now. So it's still for discussion. Yes. Right. But that's what proposed right now. Okay. The projection that's existing to an eight inch existing. But so isn't the work already done with the wall and stuff? Uh, actually, it's just a temporary wall, but I mean, there's only one little wall. This wall is there already. The only thing is going to be done is just finishing this wall. Down. So the work's already been completed that you're requesting approval for? Yes, basically most of, the, <laughs> most of it are approved uh, okay. except this little wall here. Okay. That's all. All right. So what did you add exactly? So you had the wash stones. Yes, we added um, the wash stones. Because it's all existing. When you look out in the field, yes. the wall's already built. Yes. So you're just yes. doing which portion? We're just doing this little portion of the wall with the stairs, and that's it, and adding the stones on here to help us. Katie Grace, do you have any questions? Uh, just a couple. I was looking at the plan and I just, I'm trying to discern you know, the, the red line. Um, so I noticed you added 18 inch infiltration stone. So there's just an 18 inch like kind of space between the house and I still live. Is that crushed rock or is it large? Like, what size stone is that? Just one and a half inch double wash stone. That's all. Okay. So there's no pipe there. It doesn't get routed anywhere. No. It's going to help with the infiltration. No, it, yeah, it just it goes around the house in the in the soil. There is no pipe. Okay. There, it doesn't take it anywhere. So it, again, it's just to prevent. It's just to help absorb water coming off the roof line. I assume. That's cool. Um, okay, but then you don't have that. For like the patio and the deck, is, is this the water just going to wash off the roof from the deck and the yeah. patio, or are you going to have gutters there? No, because I mean, we cannot put the <laughs> infiltration in a bed because we are like almost in the water table right there, so we cannot add any infiltration in this area. We're trying to use it in the higher ground so it can go in the ground. Okay. So. Is there a gutter? Is there something that routes the rainwater, not just sheet flowing across the yard? Sorry? Is it coming up to the ground above the Yeah, just no gutters. No gutters. That's why he has he put all the stones around Good the house so it can help with rain. The so where's um? Yeah, so the stone trenches. Can you point that out one more time? The stone trenches he installed are right here in front of the house on the side. And on both sides and in the front. But a little bit has to be minimum 10 feet away from the house, from the septic itself. Right. And Katie we'll Grace, did you hear what he said about the trenching? Um, so there's three locations that uh, yeah. they have the infiltration trenches where they can yeah. put when they can where they can install them uh, where the groundwater isn't as high and that's the best they can do. So that would be an uh, okay. open drip edge. <laughs> I got the, Katie was in here last meeting. I put the video up, and can you see the video at all, Katie, or you're not on Zoom? I think we're going to do that. I'm just multitasking a little bit. Um, I, again, I'm just, I appreciate the infiltration stone. I think that those are a good addition. I'm just wondering about the deck and the patio, the other non permeable surfaces, that I understand most of these were probably originally part of the plan to begin with. And is, is there anything else we can do in this red line plan to help them run off from those spaces, such as a gutter? It just, it's, it's a high ground water. I mean, any infiltration in this area would be just, would be like in the water table. So whatever you do would be in the water table. So I just, I don't know if it's really going to help if you dig a hole and just have standing water there. 
Okay, so you can't go anywhere because it's just standing water. Yes. Why do you put the deck underwater? <laughs> right above it. <laughs> I, I mean, you could do rain barrel structures. I mean, that's really the only thing. And water your plants okay. with them. I don't know. I'm not going to volunteer that, but. No, I, I understand that. Even if it was just something that was a that was a downspout with a diffuser on the end. Um, oh. Like this, a spread? I, from the plan, I can't see if there's anything. Besides the infiltration, you don't And then, so Mark did have some questions, and he's kind of the grading person of the board. Um, do you think that they've been satisfied? We added all the spot grades on the site to show where is the grading going, and to make sure there's no runoff going to the neighboring at all. I don't remember his questions. And was that small part? It was a little unclear on what the grade, what the finished grades were. Yeah, which is adding those spot grades all around here, around the site, to make sure that there is no no runoff going to the neighbor. Everything is going to the back, and it's a strong on the back. Katie Grace, do you have any questions? I don't, but I, I also, you know, I want to make sure my issues are resolved, and I'd like to see the correction of the red lines with the with the pipes that you and my and uh, Steve were discussing. Okay. Steve, is that a good plan? Yeah, I was. Yeah, definitely. Good. Mark, Mark had a lot of input, and then making sure whatever he represents is accurate from the original approval. Okay, so that grading the grading plan that you presented to us. Um, anyone in the audience have any questions or concerns regarding this hearing? Yes, hi, this is Evangeline Sutter. I'm over at 117 Shore Road with my mother, Madeline Myers. Hello, yes. Uh, hi, how are you tonight? Good, how are you? Good, thank you for providing us the opportunity to talk. Um, I just have one quick question. I mean, I could go on and on about this. But Steve, when was that video taken at the Miller's house? Because they don't have that staircase down to the water. We were just there this morning. That staircase isn't there. Yeah, that, that staircase isn't there. I don't think, you know, the grill's there or anything either. But like I noticed the staircase because, um, you know, that's not there. You know, and it's it, it, one of the videos. I, I, I took it, I, I believe I took it June 20, since he had June 25th, I took it before. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're, they're always like changing things around. That staircase isn't there anymore. I mean, I was just out at Walnut Lake this morning and um, it wasn't there. What do you mean? Back up in my home in Beverly now, but um, so you might want to take a ride over there to see the day-to-day -day changes okay. that go on. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, I just wanted to point that out because uh, it didn't seem accurate to me. Okay, if and I could just interrupt you for one second, um, the applicant's representative. Yes. Is I mean, the client is saying it is there. The client is saying it is there. Oh, okay. I guess we didn't notice that. Yes. Yeah. See it. Okay. 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 So it is. It is there. So, what's there? What's there? You, are you talking about? That one, right? The one on the right? Yeah, the one over. Yeah, on the left. That one there? Uh, the 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 white one coming off of the house. Right there. Yes. You saying that that's not there no more? Okay. No more. I don't believe it's there, sir. No. Okay. Uh, the owner is stating that it is there. 
Okay, well, all right. Well, forgive me. Okay, but, um, that's all right. All right. Um, you know, I am concerned about the runoff that this would impose on my mother's and, and my house. Um, you know, it's there was one shot in that video where like the road is practically up to my mother's second level. Um, there's so much fill there. There's so many retaining walls. It's like Hoover Dam. Everything's just gonna run off into our yard. And I, I am just incensed that all of this would have been approved and built without being vetted by the town first. And a year later, we're being, you know, you're asking for things that should have been approved beforehand so that that upsets me a little um you know the whole thing with the 12 inch pipe you know putting in that eight inch pipe that's not the right thing that ran through the miller's yard ran through christy christo's yard it needs to be restored okay because they're diverting all the water excuse me sorry um do you have any specific questions or concerns regarding the plan presented tonight well, I really don't know what plan that is. Steve, could you pull up the plan again? And zoom in to the amended portions of the plan. Everyone see that now? Yep. If you could zoom in a little bit. Zoom in a little bit more. It's actually the one to the right. Oh. You can have either one, it's fine. Okay. So this is the area, I think, I don't know if you can see my mouse. This is the area where he has in question. I don't know if I can zoom in. If you go to the one yes. on the right, it will be clear. There we go. I believe it's here. Is this on the screen that people can see it? It is. I can yeah. see. So the original, I think the original proposal, you see these white gray lines? This was all going to be fill. This whole area here was going to be fill, and everything was going to pitch towards this way. It was just going to be a mound coming down. And what they did, I think they cleared all this in. If you see the video, this is all cleared. They put this wall here, so it's level. Is that correct, Maru? Yes. Yeah. So instead of having the runoff go to the neighboring property, we we'll control it in our property. So if I bring up, if I bring up the video, let me bring up the video. So is the video up? Yep. So if I back up, I think we're able to can talk about it. Sure. Let's see. Right here, you see how this is cut up on the house? Robert, well, explain yes. that this was all yes. going to be filled at so one time, right? So this whole area was supposed to be filled, and then we're eliminating all the fill, and we're going to have everything pull back and we add the retaining walls, this way we don't have to send any drainage to, your, to the neighbor. So we believe this is a bit of a, an improvement to the site. And adding the stones under the wall will help us in drainage. Now is there any provisions along this fence? Is this raised where if water comes off the street? I, I, I think there was a video 
a year or so ago where water was coming off the street and it was pouring over this wall and in, into the neighbors and cutting through. Is there, is there a provision for keeping like a berm here, keeping water from going into the abutter Mrs. Myers property? Yep. If that this happens when if this happens if the pipe say for sake of argument the pipe happens to fly for some reason debris and it and the road floods and water comes pouring over this wall. Was it am I incorrect for our or the neighbors did it, if when that happened water kind of cut through into Mrs. Myers? I mean if you zoom in a little bit you will see the grading is actually going toward my client's house, not the neighbor and the, by the wall section. If you zoom in you can see the grading is going toward the house actually not toward not to the right, go to the left. Uh, you see it's higher ground on the right hand side than the lower side. So we believe anything should go towards either the pond or the our house, but not towards the neighbor. Yeah, but it can still go under the fence. I mean we're improving the site but we don't we're not required to control everything that was previously going to your property, but we're doing our best to control according to the stormwater management. Mm -hmm. Any water landing on the property stays on the property. Yeah. So, so nothing's coming to the left here. So there's, you don't need a burn here? No. A little raised burn? I don't, we, don't, we don't think we need a burn, but if any issues happen, we can add it, but I don't think we need it. But if the previous site had some runoff go to the neighbor and we are reducing that dramatically right now. So, I mean, according to soil water measurement, there shouldn't be an increase of runoff. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't also eliminate everything because mm -hmm. then we are redirecting the water from one, one mm -hmm. location to another. Mm -hmm. But as long as we have no increase and we actually do a reduction, so it should be an Okay. All right. Um, has your question been answered, Evie? Um, thank you for asking. I, I appreciate that. You know, I guess my question has been answered, but my concerns haven't. You know, I, I don't really think the town is effectively dealing with the runoff from these large construction projects. It's impacting property. It's impacting the lake. And that's unfortunate. So I'm done now. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else in the audience have questions or concerns? I see two hands up. Um, Ms. Lawrence, name and address, please. Um, hello. Thank you. I'm um, Jean Lawrence, 119 Shore Road. Um, I want to reiterate um, the concerns that the Benjamin Sutter said and emphasize something she mentioned. The road has been raised up so much. So what happened, um, like, I guess a year or so ago, when there was that really big flood, is that a big berm had been put in front of this house so that when the culvert overflowed, the water was directed into Madeline Myers and created essentially like a small river through her property, um, which has now got the boards, um, you know, and you know, she can't close her doors and things like that. But um, that, I think the building inspector asked the Millers to take down the berm, which they sort of did, but it was like kind of leveled. It was graded into the road. So the reason that you see that big retaining wall and everything is the front yard has been raised and the whole elevation has changed like a lot. And now um, the road is graded in such a way that it tilts a little bit down towards my house and, and, and somewhere towards Madeline's, but uh, also into the woods. And it's created like a little a little stream bed on the other side of the road. And a pond forms across from my house, which is next, you know, it's two houses from this about 100 feet. And, um, and that pond um, goes through the ground and runs through the, the basement of my house. Um, so I'm glad that Madeline isn't flooded as much, um, but, but now the water comes through my house. Um, so I would ask that, um, you know, as part of the building permit, they were required to keep the 12 inch drainage through the property, but they were also required to maintain the road. And that shouldn't 
shouldn't be that the road is used to redirect the water. Um, if you look at the elevations here from what they were before, they've changed markedly. And that, I don't think, was ever in the plan, to my knowledge. OK. So I, I wonder, is it possible to have, this is complicated enough, and it would be to the miller's benefit to make sure that this all works. So could there be a peer review of this property um, and so that we, you know, we get final suggestions uh, or, or indications of exactly how these final <clears throat> details could be done so that that um, neighboring properties are not flooded and, and the Miller's house can be completed. Can you speak to the raising of the front yard? There is actually, the grading is exactly as designed before and there is no changes in the front yard. I think we're talking about the street itself. We went, we took some ground shots from the street and they are very much the same as the original one. Mm -hmm. I mean, the street is dirt, mm -hmm. every time they plow the street, I mean things move around, but right. if it's up by like an inch or two, but it's within the same elevation as before. Mm -hmm. No changes, to, I mean, all the changes are on our property only. Yeah, I'm not sure why you're showing gravel driveway within the because that's exist right of way. Existing. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that was, was a proposed plan. No. Proposed. So the the approved plan never showed anything because you can't really have a driveway in uh, the right of way. No, I mean if you Steve can bring the approved plan again, you will see the existing gravel two gravel driveways. Okay, the words aren't there. That's why. But they were, yeah, but they were shown as, as driveways on the roof land in the original. Okay, I just want to be clear on, no, we're not, we're we're not, not make, no, I know, we're not authorizing any driveways within the right of way, no, within actually, the street. Exactly, no, that's an existing gravel drive. Okay. And regarding the pipe, I, the millers are not going to do any work or alter the pipe in any way. So I'm seeing some shot um, shots in the street. 100.8, 100.8. 0.6, 100 Okay. Yeah, those are existing elevations, so it didn't change from last time. And then the septic area. What is that grade into the road? Uh, on top of the septic is 100.1, 100.3, and 100.2, so the grading from the septic to the house. Okay, is it a line? So see where the gravel drive on the right, there's some sort of, is that a grade line or is that an edge of something? Which one? Um, the one that goes like this, around the telephone pole. This one. Is that a grade that's, line? That's, a, that's an existing gravel, the, the line for the gravel drive. So existing no, like right. See how it like ties in over here, and then yeah, it goes yeah. like this around the pole. That's, that's a gravel drive line here. A gravel drive line. It's it's not a grid. Okay. It's right here. The around the pole. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so this is the gravel drive right here. Okay. All right. So, Miss Lawrence, did your question get answered? Mm -hmm. They're saying that there has been no grade change at the street elevation with this project? Um, I think that the elevation there has been changed. I guess he's saying it's the elevation of the road. Um, but, but the elevation of the road um, was done to incorporate the berm so that the water would overflow into their property. So where's the berm? Show is there an existing berm today? No, the ber no, no, there's not a berm there uh -huh. now. The berm um, was protecting their property from the natural flow of the water, and now the road has been elevated to make it like a, you know a shallow berm to protect the property from from the overflow that we saw before. Who elevated the roadway? Because the grades look and appear like they're the same exact grades as 2015. Well, I think, here's a picture, I guess a video, but all he's shown is two spot grades. I don't think he really, did, did you do any spot grades from, from where the video is now, along, from the pipe all the way along the front end? Well, I did spot grades and the areas that really that were concerned by the neighbor, that's why I showed those two spot grades. The rest of the contour is correct. Uh, nothing changed in the 
proposed was the same as existing that 101 line yeah it didn't change nothing nothing needs to be changed okay uh does that answer steve what do you think well i'm just looking for if he's saying did, did he do spot grades all yes. did you did you survey the entire from the what I'm showing on the screen from the front of the car from where I'm standing along the entire front is all you show is two little red dots, but you don't show any red contour lines. I mean, there is an existing contour line showing 101 and 100. You can see 101 contour, mm -hmm. and basically this section of the contour is mm -hmm. the rock. Mm -hmm. On which plan? Mm -hmm. on, which, on the, the overlay plan? The existing grades. In all of them. 101 and 100. Yeah, if you see the 101, there is a high point, which is... Yeah, but those are, those are faint lines. Those aren't the existing red lines. Right, they're, like, they're, they're existing. Not, they never changed, he's saying. They were never altered. Well, it, um, well then you should have just put them in red on top of it. Which is existing to bug. It says just existing to bug. Usually we show it like in a lighter color, so we can show proposed to work on top. Okay. Um, Mrs. Lawrence, does that answer your questions? Um, you know, it's just when you go there, you visually see it. The grading has changed, and the water, it used to be a completely flat road, so if it rained, water didn't run down from in front of that house towards my house, but now it would. Um, and so, and visually, when you look at it, you can just see it. I do have a lot of pictures. I don't know if you can tell from the pictures. Yeah, if Steve can pull up um, the original filing from 2015, yeah. I'm sure he has a video if we give him a couple minutes. Um, so if, is that your only question? Well, um, actually, I wasn't able to be here for the last meeting, and I... I guess, is it possible to get hold of the plans and then I could show them to someone? Because I don't, um, I feel like the, the level of changes that have happened here, um, you know, I just don't understand. Like it was mentioned that that corner of the house was supposed to be fill. Did you mean like soil? And now it's more cement? Because that whole, you know, Evie mentioned dam, you know, which is a good analogy. There's been so much stone and cement brought into that property. And then I also heard a mention that um, something about would there be um, gutters. And um, I remember that um, Mr. Frazier, the building inspector, he brought it up. I didn't. He said, oh, I'm making that put gutters on. So all well, the water that comes up of the roof um, would would be directed somewhere. And so I thought that there was just a mention that there wouldn't be gutters. So I think there's, you know, quite a few concerns and I'm not I'm not I'm not clear on he's saying it's improving and protecting the neighbors. Um, that's good if that's what's happening here, but it would it would be really nice to um, have this more closely examined by either the members of the CONCOM or someone who knows about these things or you know a peer review or or if I get the plan then maybe I could have an engineer look at it. Um, but I think there's quite a few questions and let's remember this is a very sensitive area where you have this enormous house filling in all that land right like 15 feet from a wetlands that was never uh, put into the plan, um, you know, across the street, and then there's the Wall of Lake, and it already caused, and you know, I mean, not just that the solar farm I think contributed, but the water redirected from that house um, very much impacted um, Madeline Myers' house um, in a very serious way that's still not addressed. Okay, I think I think we've yeah. got the idea. So I just want to get. We don't want to belabor it so um, I want to see if Gregory Bentley I'm going to move on to him okay Ms. Lawrence sure. name an address for the record and then okay, Gregory, Bent Gregory Bentley 119 Shore Road um, 
I, I do have comments on the revised plan, and I've just seen it tonight on the screen for, as it's been flashing, so I haven't been able to give it a full review. Um, I'm, I'm not a licensed surveyor, but I am a professional engineer with 40 years experience and lots of surveying experience. I've been up there throughout the construction project. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that the house frontage is now built up in such a way that it diverts water around the house to the neighbors, any water that comes across that road. Unfortunately, there's water coming across the road because we all know we have 12 weeks fully functional uh, RCP there that is now not there. There's an eight inch pipe leading into it and we don't know what goes on through the property. I would ask that the eight inch be replaced with a 12. I would ask that the remainder of the 12 be televised on the, on the uh, southwest corner where we discussion them for the revisions. Even the red lines on the plan seem to be a foot higher in elevation, but there's no question that what happened just for those that don't remember is that there was a, a complete wash over the road uh, after the pipe was uh, uh, damaged. And that washout first took out the Miller's property pretty heavily in that, in that southeast corner. They came up with these revisions to, instead of having grading, first thing they did is put a temporary berm along the road, which has now been graded out into the road. It's contributed to the road elevation increase. But after that, there was another big washout, and it wiped out Madeline's driveway and the side of her house and, and all the rest. Meanwhile, the road, the water's not all getting across the road. It's going over the road because the, the culvert's failing. And when it goes, when, when it fails, it's now diverting along the east side of the road to the south, down to the next cross culvert. But it is forming the new wetland and a new pond and stream on the other side of the road, which given the high water table that's been mentioned by the Miller's engineer several times tonight, is going right through faults into uh, our basement and flowing through at, you know, I don't know, four, five, six CFS, it's blasting through there in the middle of the winter when we have a storm. So now, now they've replaced it with all this uh, concrete retaining wall, uh, block retaining wall, and filled in the whole front yard I can virtually guarantee anybody who's listening that if we do a full uh, six inch, uh, do a cross sectioning and a six inch contours up the, along the front of these two or three houses, the Millers and, and ours and, and Madeline's and I, I guess the neighbor to the, to the other direction to the uh, north, you're gonna see that the, the highest line of profile defending anything is across the front of the Miller's house, which is diverting any excess water onto our property, onto Madeline's property, and for all I know, to the neighbor uh, to, to the north. So, we, I, and the point that was being made about a berm along the fence, absolutely there should be a berm along the fence in my opinion, but I want to tell you right now, the water won't get there because they have now armored the southeast corner of that property such that that water is gonna go to Madeline before it comes to them. So it will never get, it'll, it'll be coming under the fence in the other direction if it goes anywhere. But right now, I don't see any grading in that area, but just visually, uh, having been up there recently, I don't see any grading in that area that's gonna protect the neighbors in any way, shape, or form, but it is definitely armoring the Miller's house. Um, you know, it's a beautiful home. It's four times the size of what was there, but God bless, I don't know how that happened, but it happened. I hope they enjoy it and live there healthy many years. But right now, We've got a historic drainage path through that property that was required by the approvals to be maintained. It has not been maintained. It is affecting other neighbors and going in other routes. And right now, we're the ones that are taking it. This has to be corrected before any final approval is given on this site. And there's a lot of ways to do it. If the engineers don't have any ideas, I'd be glad to give them some. But they, they can certainly run it another eight inch drain down the mountain side of that house. And, and if they will, if, if ComCom would allow it with the lake, I don't know, they might have to do some treatment at the bottom or something else. And we certainly can go across that road and put the 12 inch pipe back in and TV the rest of it and make sure it's all functional and using, and then everybody will be happy. And I don't think we'll have a problem in the future. And we've, we've gone through many meetings, much discussion, lots of plans. And, you know, right now I'm hearing that there's no difference in the elevations I am sitting here on the couch telling you that that is incorrect 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anybody, anybody doubts it, I would ask that we, I would ask that we just do a survey down the uh, uh, southern side of, of the Miller uh, the Madeline property and across the whole frontage from the from the, uh, the east side of the road to the to the front porch and the driveway and let's find out what's there because I can I can promise you that it's higher than it was and that it's rated in such a way that it puts all water on the neighbor's property. Thank you. Okay, thank you. If the um, present, you can address a couple of the this, this is the limit of issues. My, yeah, this is the limit of my client's property here. Okay. This eight inch pipe. I'm not sure the if they can see where you're. I mean, no. they can see the property line. This eight inch yep. is under the road on somebody else's property. Mm -hmm. My client has nothing to do with it. They cannot do work on the road. They cannot do some work on somebody else's property. So if they have any issue with that eight inch pipe, then they should talk to the owner of this property or the town regarding replacing that. Mm -hmm. It was replaced. Who was it replaced by? Uh, we don't know. We, 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 my client. There's ca or, you have cameras on the site, right? I'm sorry. Cameras yeah, on this site. For the I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Miss. Um, if you could just mute yourself for right now. Okay. So I'm the sorry. Millers, the millers are here. Did you guys replace the pipe under the road in any time no. during the approval process or before or after? No. It's an old pipe being there, and I think Steve showed it. So, I mean, it's an old pipe being there for a while. Okay, I'm sure someone has pictures of it being replaced. So if they have any evidence of the mm -hmm. miller in replacing this mm -hmm. pipe, cutting the road open, mm -hmm. I mean, if they cut the road open and replace the pipe, that mm -hmm. means they're going to stop the traffic mm -hmm. and do it. I mean, if mm -hmm. they have any videos, pictures, anything, we should represent that to mm -hmm. the picture. Okay. But as, as I know from my client, that the, this pipe never been touched. Okay. Steve, yeah. do we have verification that that pipe was replaced? The uh, eight, what, the one across the road? Yes. The eight we have pictures. We have the person that did it. Yeah, hang on. And then as far as that berm and raising up the property frontage. Yeah, there is no berm. Okay. Yeah, made so the elevation change the from the initial approval, there's no change. no change. I mean, maybe there was built, built up, berm built up during the construction around the fence, but they removed the fence and there is no berm there now. Okay. And she said actually that the neighbors did. Okay. What do you want to say? Uh, so they're saying that there's that eight inch pipe is old. My client is saying that they never touched the pipe under the road, they never replaced it. Was it was existing. It was an old existing pipe. I'm just wondering if the, any one has evidence that my client did replace a pipe, a 12 inch pipe with an eight inch, or did work on, on the street. Well, this is, this is, this is the, the eight inch pipe, which was, uh, this is the work that they, they did. This is Mrs. Miller right here. I think Bob was on site with the excavator. So is, this, um, is that under the road? Can I, Cable, could you make that a full street? So I really need a company plan. Can you please come over? That pipe was uh, Douglas Properties did the repair of the, of the pipe, not the else. Maybe you can say that. Yeah. I, this is what they put back in, I believe. This is the 12 inch RCP. And then they put this. Can you see this screen? Yeah. yeah. I can okay. see it. Um, I don't know who did the work. I think somebody was they were, they were on site, but I think there was another person that did the work. Okay, so, so they replaced an 8 inch pipe with another 8 inch pipe, but uh, ah. it is that Tony said uh, my client didn't do it, it's just the owner of the property. I think I can it. help you if you want an answer. Okay, name and address. Howard Potash, 390 Main Street, Worcester. I'm an attorney. I represent the Millers. Uh, when the pipe burst, Douglas Properties uh, replaced the pipe. They had the responsibility. They replaced the pipe. It was approved by the building inspector. They hired someone uh, to replace the pipe, uh, and my clients did not replace the pipe uh, whatsoever. Uh, all they uh, uh, did was allow uh, the people who replaced the pipe 
uh, they wanted to use their bulldozer and the millers uh, couldn't let them do it because of insurance. So at their direction, uh, they just uh, moved uh, uh, some uh, dirt for them uh, at no charge because they, they own a bulldozer. But they, they did not have the responsibility and they did not remo remove or replace the pipe at all. They, had, they absolutely didn't do it. Uh, it was done by Douglas Properties that owns the uh, uh, property across the street from where their house is, owns all that land across the street. And I think last year I was here and that was brought up uh, to it. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and my clients had no, no responsibility and did not uh, replace any pipe or pay for the pipe or pay uh, for any of the, of the work. Uh, Douglas Properties found uh, someone in the area who was willing to do the work for them and actually did physical work and Douglas Properties uh, actually uh, paid uh, for the pipe and, and all the work involved. My clients did not do anything with the pipe at all. Okay. Thank who you. did, yes, um, who did the work? I think, uh, if I can ask my client, it was, uh, what was the people's name? Douglas Properties. Douglas Mike, Properties. And Mike Naducci. Naducci. There was Michael Naducci mm -hmm. who actually physically uh, did the work. And I understand uh, at the time I had a call that he, is a, he and his brother replaced pipes. But they were paid for and hired by Douglas Properties. Okay. And what was the previous pipe size in the roadway? There was four different pipes in oh. there. Is it eight inches? They pulled up four different pipes. I, they were all different sizes. I guess they were all different sizes, and they were and and they were, and, and and there was a, a re pipe replacement by Douglas Properties, and the building inspector, I recall at the time, was involved along with uh, 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 Henry Lane, a uh, uh, lawyer in Whitensville that represents Douglas Properties, and uh, my clients uh, did not uh, have anything to do with it except letting uh, the Naducci's uh, use their bulldozer at no charge okay. because it was available. Okay. That's all they did. Okay. Thank all right. You. Thank you. Okay. Steve. Yeah. Comments? Well, I, well, so it sounds like then Douglas Properties, you know, my understanding, talking to your engineer, and then that uh, we sent that, we had a letter drafted up by Tom mm -hmm. Council to them. Mm hmm regarding how they have to file a notice of intent regarding the work that they did with the emergency certificate last July. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have them on the August 1st meeting. It sounds like that maybe they can just come in and talk to the commission about um, filing a notice of intent. And um, looks like the, the, the pipe, maybe they can just replace the pipe with a 12 inch um, since it's outside the Miller's property. But we can talk about that with them at the August 1st meeting. Okay, and was this site previously peer reviewed? This wasn't, no. Okay, but the one across the street was by Art Allen? I believe the wetlands across the street was, was part of the uh, subdivision and solar farm for that. It's been flagged quite a few times over the last 15 years. Okay. Um, board, what are you thinking? Eric? Um, what do you think we should have a peer review of this? I. It's up to the board um, if it's getting, I mean, there's contradictory things being said with the change of the front, the topography of the front, which I'm not really sure what's happening on that. Um, and that enforcement letter from Douglas Properties. Um, so I'll go around and see. Katie Grace? Yeah, it's okay, Katie. I couldn't quite hear you. What was that? Well, I'm just thinking the peer review was brought up. I don't think we've ever had a peer review for this property. Um, also, there's some discrepancy on the topography of the frontage that may have changed from the original approved plan that's not being shown on the amended. 
So I would absolutely agree with that. Um, and I also, we, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, did we ever get an ad built for the work done in the roadway? No, but that would be. That may not be relevant to this case, but. Right. They're kind of connected, though. They're kind of connected, and I, you were talking about the survey from across the street that Douglas Properties had done. Um, so I, since we have that data, it would be nice to also have that as built plan for the roadway. Yep, that would be under Douglas Properties. I believe we've requested them to file a notice of intent for that roadway work. So I guess I'm just taking a survey. Do we want to send this out for peer review? So I say yes. Okay, Eric. I would agree. Okay, Mike. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, with the peer review for the road itself or for my client? Nope, for your clients, the amended uh, notice of intent details. Okay, so only okay. for our work, our grade, yes. we have nothing to do with this area? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what is the purpose for the peer review, if you don't, if you don't mind? Um, to take a look at what's actually on the plan and in the, in the, uh, at the frontage there. And the whole, the whole, change all the changes. And Tracy, I'm not sure if you want to. We have that notice of intent that was continued. That's that the culvert's not. The, they, Douglas Property owns both properties across the street. The one where the culvert, the in, the inlet to the culvert is actually on one of the lots. It's not being developed, but the one where the notice of intent. It's kind of across from the the, the property line from Madeline and the Millers. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I'm not sure if you want the consultant to look at that notice of intent, piping, you know, the drainage coming down from the that notice of intent, and along with this amended. Yes. Uh, we can do them separately, or we can try to tie it all together. Let's um, let's keep the tasks separate, but I think one affects the other. Is that fair? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, would you be in an agreement for the peer review? I mean, I, I really don't see the reason for it. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, I mean, if you look at the approved plan and this plan, there is no changes. And if I mean, we're already showing all the spot grades on our property, we're showing mm -hmm. that all grading is going toward the lake, nothing going toward the abutting properties, and we have no runoff going to the street. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so I, just, I, don't I think it's the diversion of the runoff from the street. What has changed from the approved plan? So you have an amended order, uh, amended notice of intent in front of us. So we have to. If there's been an issue. If there was no issue, then it yeah, probably wouldn't be needed. So we have to cross our T's and dot our I's. Yeah, I, we also know that the Millers did no work on the road. It's done by somebody mm -hmm. else. So if they know where the road or raised it, that's. Mm -hmm. to be on their order of condition to fix what they did. But right. on the Millers, it's similar to what was approved before. Mm -hmm. So if somebody did work on the road, they should fix that. Mm -hmm. And as long as the Millers are following the original approved order of condition, mm -hmm. I just do not understand why we have to go through a peer review. Well, because you have an open permit, yes. and where the board is still a little concerned with the, and there's a butters that have concerns. So to have that in black and white in the file, that would be good. And I think, okay. just for clarification, you know, I don't think that, I think the, some, some people might get it confused. I think the ZBA had some conditions that, that was under the control of the building inspector about, and he, he might have had, he might have had the ability to enforce them to, with the ZBA decision that they had to maintain the stretch of road to a certain length and the pipe. Um, but that was, a, I, I believe that might have been a ZBA decision and part of their conditions. Um, and so that's why I think the Millers, correct if I'm wrong, but they might have had to grade the road at no. one point. Did you? Um, just fill the potholes. Um, um, name and address. Yep. All we had to do was fill any potholes, and there's no potholes on the road. Okay. That's it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's easy enough to double check the conditions of the ZBA approval for the construction of the home. So I think that's, we can check on that record. Unless Steve has it handy. I don't. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Um, board, I'll entertain a motion to request peer review for this notice of intent as well as Douglas Properties, Shore Road, lot number 299, parcel 7.16, to be separately reviewed and to see if there's any um, adverse connection between the two of those. So and by the along, same reviewer. And along with the, uh, looking at the, uh, the enforcement um, emergency um, certificate, if, if needed. Yes. So three, three tasks. Yes. This would be separate. So move. Motion made by Mike. Second. Second by Eric. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Sorry, is this for the continuance? This is to have peer review. Aye. Okay. And then um, we will continue this to August 1st, 2022. I'll entertain a motion to continue. So move. May I, motion made by Eric? Second. Second by Mike. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike? Mike Greco, aye. Katie Dudley, aye. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Next item is public hearing continued notice of intent, 92 Martin Road, single family yes. dwelling. Name and address and the changes that you have made since the initial presentation. Yes. Uh, good evening. My name is Nicole Hayes, um, professional wetland scientist with Goddard Consulting. Um, as we left it off at the last hearing, there was a few requests that the commission had made uh, according to the plan. One was to add the 25 foot buffer zone buffer, which we did, which is right here. Um, also to look at the, the way that the buffers were coming off the wetland line. Those were fixed, um, the engineer said, it was due to overlap of radii. Okay. So those were fixed. Um, there was a question that arose, why couldn't we move the house closer to the road? Um, with talking to the engineers, it's, it's been determined that there is going to be an underground garage. And the reason why they can't move the house closer to the road has to do with the steepness of the driveway. Mm -hmm. And to mitigate for that, the um, applicant has decided um, to put some of the wetland signs up, uh, markings along the 50 foot. There is a diagram on the plan that shows it. Um, they're eight inches by six inches on a four foot high fence post. Um, also, a question came about about the drainage down the driveway and how that would be mitigated going into the jurisdictional buffer zone. And that has been done with a vegetated swale. Um, there is details on the vegetated swale. Um, it will be seeded and have plants along it. Um, reed canary grass and fescue around um, on the bottom of the slope and Kentucky Blue and Sweet Fern on the top of the slope. Um, so the vegetative swale will accommodate volume and velocity of the driveway. Um, also I have a drainage um, driveway mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. um, that shows that the drainage will be okay. okay. Um, so that's evidence there. Mm -hmm. um, and we also brought um, plans to your attention or hand delivered them this afternoon for you. I also have copies here if anybody needs to look at them. But um, your last revision date is the 15th? Yes, yep. Yeah, I was just waiting Friday. to sign and stamp it. It had to go through review mm -hmm. and sign and stamped. Okay. Steve, any comments, questions? No, I think they did a good job in trying to make the appropriate changes. Okay. Board? 
Questions, comments? I don't think so. No. no. Just real quick, because I didn't see the, the first one of this. Um, she names the plantings like uh, the bluegrass and the fescue. Is that just identifying what's at the edge of the lawn area? No, that's within the vegetated swale that's mitigating for the steep driveway. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you. Mike, Eric? No. Anyone in the audience have any questions or concerns regarding this hearing? Steve, do you think that the signs are sufficient for anti-creep method? They're putting the signs in? Yeah, on a four foot high fence post. Six inches by eight inches. Wow, I think that the, hopefully the fence. There's no fence, it's just a fence post. Yeah, wow. Well. So there's, there's five, there's five signage. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a short term solution. I think usually a split rail fence, usually along, along the border, typically prevents people from in there, yeah, I just don't know if um, just have a one signage. Is, yeah, five years or ten years. Condition. Okay. Yeah, and I don't even know. Um, I don't mind if you don't even do the sign. But just around the half the post. I yeah. Mean, the and we usually do separated, right? Pieces, six foot pieces. Uh, if they didn't want to spend the money on doing the entire board, yeah. they can separate it and do a little landscape in between them or, you know, kind of leave that up to them for the purpose. If they want to do the whole back of the property line, that's a split rail. Yeah, I think the limits, like, from the, the, the five signs, so the left and the right, are good. And um, a barrier split rail fencing with or without landscape separation, so, okay. like, fence piece space fence piece yeah. they could do that or they can do the entire in lieu of those um fun, the signs okay. the fence post and the sign okay um anyone in the audience have any questions or concerns regarding this hearing seeing none i'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing motion made by eric second Second by Mike. All those in favor? Nicole, aye. Katie Dudley, aye. I entertain a motion to issue the order of conditions with one change in the place card and split rail fence as a anti-creep barrier. Motion made by Eric. Second. Second by Mike. All those in favor? Eric Gross, aye. Mike Rucko, aye. Katie Dudley, aye. Okay. Thank aye. you very Thank much you very for much. waiting. Have a good one. Thanks. All right. Steve, do you have anything else? Nope. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion made by Mike. Second. Second by Eric. All those in favor? Eric Gross, aye. Mike Rucko, aye. Katie Dudley, aye. Okay. Thank you very much.